Hi everyone, it's Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com and I am feeling joyful because Christmas 2017 is almost upon us. But if you are not feeling joyful, if you feel like you're rushing and have a few last minute things to gift and you don't know what to do, perhaps this will help you. This is a cute little teapot. It's adorable and it's quick to make. You can make it with what you have on hand. And the compartment is three inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall by about a half inch deep. So you can fit quite a few things in there. What I have in this one is one of the three by six inch gusseted bags and I have a gift card and two tea bags. But flat candy such as Ghirardelli's or any of the flat candy bars would fit in there as well. And this one I made with old olive cardstock. And I made it with a delicate white doily, some cherry cobbler and whisper white. And I used the mini chevron old olive ribbon on that one. Now the DSP that I used was the Stampin' Up! Merry Little Christmas, because I like the old olive. It's one of my favorite colors. But I'm going to try to make a little bit more, perhaps, a masculine version of it, so you can gift it to anyone. You'll need an 8 by 8 inch piece of cardstock, and I'm going to use Smoky Slate this time. For the front, you'll need a piece that's 2 and 7 eighths inches wide by 3 and 3 quarter inches long, and I'm using the ear cheer for this one with a snowflake pattern on it. If you want to put on the back, you'll need two of those. But you can just decorate the front. For the spout you'll need a piece that's two and a half inches square and we're going to cut it on the diagonal and that will give you a front and a back if you wish to do both sides. Instead of the delicate white doily I'm going to use one of the metallic snowflakes in silver and then you'll need a scrap of whisper white for the sentiment and that was a, one of the layering circles that's one and one eighth of an inch. And then you'll need a contrasting card stock, and I think I'll use the smoky slate for this one as well. And that layering circle is one and three eighths inches that you'll cut from it. We'll need a couple of circle punches, and I used a one inch and a one and a half inch circle punch. And let's get the trimmer out and get going. So I have my piece at eight inches by eight inches, and we're actually going to score on the diagonal. So go ahead and fit the diagonal and put one of the points up at the quarter inch mark. So can you see we're right at the quarter inch mark and I know you can't see it in the camera but my bottom one is also on the quarter inch mark. So I know when I score I'll score parallel to the diagonal and go ahead and score. Okay and then we'll flip it around 180 degrees and do the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure that top, top point is on the one quarter of an inch mark as well as the bottom and go ahead and score. Okay, so we have a half inch score line right across the diagonal. Now turn it 90 degrees so you have your other diagonals and put that on the one and a half inch mark. So I have that one at the one and a half inch mark as well as the bottom, even though I know you can't see the bottom, it's there. And then flip that one around 180 degrees to the other side and do the same thing, top and bottom on the one and a half inch mark. Okay, that's all for that piece, but while we have it out, let's go ahead and cut our two and a half inch square on the diagonal. And how I do that is I put, I line up the diagonal corners, both on the cutting groove, and I don't try to pull down from the top, because whenever I do that, it kind of smashes down my corner. So I actually will start the blade um, in the in this cardstock, and I'll go up a little bit, and then I'll go down, and that way it prevents it from smashing down the blade. Okay, so we got that done. All right, let's fold and burnish the score lines. Okay, and now if you'll see on the side, we have two wide triangles here. And what we're trying to do is we're going to go right from the center of that line in and how I did it was I measured from this score line to that score line and I'm one of my things I'm going to do for this year is actually get a ruler that you can see without me having to go all the way down to the bottom of my corner here. But as you can see from this score line to this score line is five and a half inches. So at two and seven eighths, I'm just going to make a little, I'm sorry, two and three quarters. I'm just going to make a little tick mark right there. And I'm going to do that for all of these wide triangles just so I know what the center is. Two 
two and three quarters. Okay, and that just gives us our center point because we're going to cut from there right into where those two score lines meet. So let me grab my big scissors. And right from that tick mark, I'm going to cut right into where those score lines meet on all four corner on on all four triangles. Okay, so how this will work is this is going to be our teapot. One of these sides will be the handle and one of these sides will be the spout. So what we're going to do is on the handle side, I'm going to round both of these corners and actually on the top while I'm doing that. And I have a one and a half inch um, circle punch and I'm just gonna use that to give me a nice big round on that one. So go ahead and just tuck that into the cutting track where um, I've done this before. Just tuck it in the cutting track. Make sure that the cardstock is touching on both sides so it'll give you a nice rounded corner and clip. And we'll do the top of the teapot while we're here. Okay, now let's do it to the same to the other side. Here's the top of the other side of it. And make sure you're on the same side as the handle. And we'll go ahead and do that to the other side for the handle as well. Okay, so those are done. <clears throat> so remember that that's our handle side and that's our spout side. All right, so please forgive me, my uh, storage was full, so I had to reconfigure a few things. Um, what I had just finished up was to cut, was to punch with my one and a half inch circle punch, the top, both my tops, and I just stuck it in the cutting line and cut it like that. And two of the triangles on the same side as the wide parts, and those will be my handles. And I did the same thing with this. I cut it into, put it into the cutting track and I punched it. So it gave me a nice rounded, wide rounded um, corner. All right, the last thing I did, which I don't think you saw, is I had two triangles here on both sides of this half inch score line. And these are gonna be our glue tabs. So all I needed to do is just to cut it down to about a half an inch on either side of the um, of this half an inch strip. So these are glue tabs for this. And then on both of the ends, right from the score line to the score line, I'm cutting off that little point because I don't need it. And same on this side. <clears throat> All right, so let me go ahead and glue my, um, my two and seven eighths by three and three quarters of an inch uh, designer series paper. And that was from the year of cheer. And I have my triangle, and I'll adhere that one on as well. And how I do that is I actually put this point on first, and I space it about an eighth of an inch from both sides. And that kind of lines me up pretty well with the score line. All right, so here are our handles and here are our spouts, and I feel like singing the little teapot song. But what I'm going to do now is actually make the hole for the handle side. And how I did that was I took them up and I held them together so that these sides were both equal. And I used my one inch circle punch and I pushed it right in from the side and I'm right over the top of where that uh, angle is, where that corner is. And I pushed it up almost to the score line. So we'll put it, see I can see the score line. Let me back it up a little bit. And as I said, I'm right where that is and kind of right in between there and go ahead and punch. And there's our handle. Now the last thing I did was for the spout. And again, I put these two together and I went to the spout side. So I made sure my points were lined up. And about halfway up, I took my one inch punch and I did a little less than, you know, that's about halfway. I did a little bit less than halfway. And I did it about halfway between this score line and that point. You can do it where it looks good to you. And go ahead and punch. 
and that gives you a little bit of a spout look. And then I took my scissors and I lined up right from this score line and cut it right down to the bottom of that half a circle. So just line this one up and cut it to the bottom of the circle. And if you need to cut it just a wee bit more to make it look a, uh, there we go, that's better. And I did the same thing with the other side, just right from the score line to the bottom of the circle, okay? All right, so let's glue together our teapot. So I'm going to use Tombow because it gives me a little bit more wiggle room. If you want to use a uh, fast fuse or the tear and tape, go right ahead. I just need a little extra chance to get my things together. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't matter which side you start on, but go ahead and just take the tab and line up this score line with the score line on the teapot part. Okay, and you can go ahead and put this other one over there too. And just line up those score lines. And that's why I like the Tombow. It gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room. Okay. And go ahead and use your bone folder to press that down. And do the same thing with the other tab. Go ahead and sing those in and line those up with the score lines and go ahead and close it. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is to take a glue dot and just stick both the sides of the spout and both the sides of the handle together. Line those up. And let me do the same for the spout. Okay, so let me set that aside for a minute. Okay, so here's my inch and 3 8 inch smoky slate circle. And I went ahead and stamped um, the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry sentiment on my Whisper White. And I used my Old Olive and my Cherry Cobbler marker just to give the, the holly leaves and the um, berries just a little bit of color. So let me go ahead and put that together now. Let me go ahead and put this onto my snowflake. Try to get centered here. Okay, and then I'm going to put some Tombow and center that onto my smoky slate layer. All right, so let me bring that back up. Let me glue it now with a little Tombow onto my teapot. All right, make sure I'm straight. So the last thing I want to do is to go ahead and punch some holes for my ribbon. So I'll hold those two tops together and I'll come in from the side and just go about halfway from the top to the bottom and about a half an inch in and try to match it up on the other side. All right, so let me take some of the silver metallic edge ribbon and I'll thread it through on that side and go back this way. You can see I'm getting a little rough edge there, but that's okay, we'll cut that off. Oops. All right, let me go ahead and make sure I'm there you can certainly put a if you want to you can uh, punch a tag and put a two from tag on the back at this point and let's go ahead and tie a bow 
All right, so that's our little teapot. Let me bring the other one back in. And the one thing I forgot to put in was my uh, three by six inch um, gusseted bag with two tea bags and a gift card in there. But you certainly can tuck that in and then go ahead and tie the bow or any other small thing that will fit in. So I hope you enjoyed the project today. It's quick and easy to do with what you have on hand. Good for a last minute but special gift to give to someone. And I hope you are enjoying the Advent season. I hope your heart is prepared and that you're peaceful and joyful waiting for the coming of our Lord and Savior. If you need any more information, please go to rejoiceandcreate.com. And I hope you have a blessed and peaceful Christmas Day. Bye.